Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first our top story. Police are investigating shots fired in a southwest Sioux Falls neighborhood. Officers responded to the area of 44th Street and Marion Road around 4.30 this morning. There's been a heavy police presence in the neighborhood since then. They've also blocked traffic into the area. A resident who lives across the street tells Kelloland News he heard as many as 16 shots fired in multiple exchanges. We've reached out to police for information and will pass along any new details as soon as they become available. We also expect to learn more during Monday morning's police briefing, which we will live stream here on Kelloland.com beginning at 1030. A driver is facing charges following a pursuit in Sioux Falls. The Highway Patrol says a trooper attempted to pull over a 2017 Ford Fusion at 41st in Minnesota last night, but the driver would not stop. The pursuit continued at East 41st and ended when the vehicle hit a curb. The Highway Patrol says charges are pending against the driver, 25-year-old Alexander Borholo of Sioux Falls, who was treated at the hospital for minor injuries. U.S. Senator John Thune is back in South Dakota following a trip to the southern border. Thune visited the Rio Grande Valley in Texas to see firsthand the challenges facing U.S. Border Patrol agents. Thune says he witnessed many issues that concerned him, including a lack of border agents and resources. Thune says while South Dakota is not a border state, the influx of drugs coming in from Mexico directly affect people here. This is an issue that's impacting Americans all across the country, even if you live in the interior. And um, it is a, I described it this way earlier, it is an unmitigated disaster. It, it really is. This is a major crisis, has uh, national security implications, um, and it's a humanitarian crisis. Thuin has introduced a bill in the Senate that would make it easier for families of overdose victims to file civil claims against countries like Mexico and China that enable the flow of fentanyl into the United States. Thuin is also a supporter of a wall along the southern border. The late Jim Aberesk had a profound political and personal influence on South Dakotans during his time on Capitol Hill. Aberesk died late last month on his 92nd birthday. One of his legislative assistants went on to a political career of his own. Tom Daschle served as both Senate Majority and Minority Leader. We'll hear from Daschle about Aberesk's legacy in tonight's Eye on Kelloland. Find out why Daschle says Aberesk accomplished more in one term in office than any other U.S. Senator tonight at 10. The annual Women's Day of Service took place Saturday at MB in downtown Sioux Falls. Volunteers packed more than a thousand kits of hygiene, home, and postpartum products to distribute to nonprofits across Sioux Falls. Organizers say these kits and supplies would not be possible without the many donors and volunteers. Every time I do this, I'm always amazed at the people that show up. When you're starting a new project, you always wonder, are people going to believe in it? Are they going to see the need? And Sioux Falls is such a beautiful place to live. People care very deeply about helping others, and they show up to support them. The local Women's Day of Service has packed and distributed nearly 3,000 of these kits over the past four years. Let's take our first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. A lot of cloud cover this morning, and for some, snow falling as well. It's the beginning of what well, may be a bit of an active weather pattern that takes us through really the majority of this upcoming work and school week. For now, though, as we take a look downtown, it's just gray on the breezy side 29 at the airport that's a view north with an east wind at nine miles per hour we're at 27 in brookings 29 also in watertown 19 ortonville 30 in aberdeen mitchell and yankton 32 toward pier but 22 in rapid city and it has been a little windy at times especially in central kilowind we've had winds uh, about 15 to 20 miles per hour at times so there is some of the snow it's moving through Mitchell and Yankton on the southern side, but then we have a band of moderate snow that's been creeping up to the north and east over the last hour or so. So keep in mind if you're over towards, say, uh, Watertown, Aberdeen, and eventually into other portions of northeastern Kelloland, we will want to keep an eye on that. Visibility may drop briefly as you interact with it through the morning. It's not the last time we talk about snow either. More on that coming up. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, the U.S. team men's and women's teams play in today's quarterfinals of the Summit League Basketball Tournament in Sioux Falls. On Saturday, both SDSU teams won their games to advance to the semifinals. You'll want to stay with Kelloland News on air and online for complete championship coverage. Check out our Summit League page here on Kelloland.com where you can follow the action with bracket standings, tweets, and photos throughout the tournament. Well, if you're in Sioux Falls and looking for something to do in between Summit League games, some downtown breweries are showing off their hops during MASH Madness. 
The competition features five breweries showcasing five new original beers. It's a timely boost for business at Severance Brewing Company with spring just around the corner. We get burger battle to bring people out in January and then it seems like everybody kind of goes back in and hibernates for February. Um, so this is a nice way just to kind of get people back out, get them back into the breweries and kind of kickstart spring and hopefully some nice patio weather coming up here soon. Covert, Artisan Ales, Burnson, Remedy and Woodgrain Brewing Companies are also taking part in the competition which runs through the end of the month. This is your final chance to see the works by 50 of the nation's most celebrated artists at the Washington Pavilion. Guild Hall, an adventure in the arts, features works by the likes of Andy Warhol and Jackson Pollock. This final day of the exhibit goes from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Pavilion's Visual Arts Center. The Sioux Falls Toy Show features hundreds of tables showcasing toys and other collectibles at the Ramcota Exhibit Hall. Today's hours are from 9 to 3. Admission is $6 and free for ages 12 and under. American Legion Post 15 in Sioux Falls is hosting an all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast. Serving time is from 8.30 to noon at the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance. The cost is $9, $2 for children. The Sioux Valley Model Engineer Society is hosting an open house at their club building on the north side of the fairgrounds. The free open house runs from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Adam? So there is our snow that we're going to continue to watch. The first of at least two rounds that we'll see today into tonight and Monday morning, especially for north central and northeastern Kelloland. That is ahead of a warm front that's going to continue to slowly trek up to the north and east. Meanwhile, on the southern edge of that toward northeastern Nebraska, again, Mitchell to Yankton, we're seeing some light snow that way that will try and make its way to the ground towards Sioux Falls, where we could see around an inch, maybe a little bit of less in terms of accumulation. But to the north and east, that's where we're expecting a little bit more. Winter storm warnings are in place in red just west of Aberdeen through Mulbridge as far west as Corson County for Lemon and McIntosh. That's now through noon central 11 a.m. Mountain Time Monday for Aberdeen over into Marshall County and then um, Millbank and Sisseton areas down to Dual County east of Watertown. That is a winter weather advisory also until noon central for Monday. Meanwhile, a little bit to the south of that warning going down toward portions of uh, Falk County, as well as Potter County, Dewey, Zeebok, and then uh, Perkins and Harding County. That's a winter weather advisory until 6 a.m. Central, 5 a.m. Mountain Time, Monday. Take home message is simple. We do still have snow we're going to be watching through Monday. Also blowing snow concerns as it will be rather windy at times. Now Easter for locations Monday afternoon through Tuesday do get a small break out west. Not so much as snow is expected to redevelop. Then we take a look at the Thursday Friday time frame which has been a little hit or miss as of late in terms of exactly how things evolve. But we're still looking at that time frame for the best potential to see accumulating snowfall by the end of the week as winter just does not want to go away without a fight. Now, in terms of the short term, we are still looking at three to six inches of snow toward Aberdeen and Buffalo, Sisseton and Ortonville. Highest amounts will be toward Mulbridge, McIntosh, Lemon, portions of Corson County. Uh, two to four, Brookings and Watertown, around an inch, Sioux Falls into Worthington, less than an inch, Mitchell and the Yankton. Also could see one to two in Rapid City and two to three, one to three inches of snow rather in the pier area. But this again is just Sunday into Monday. This does not take into consideration the later part of the week. Still too early to talk about amounts for that system we're more talking about potential highs today in the 30s to the north and east 40 south and west a breezy day and night on the way with lows in the teens and 20s your seven day forecast has a small break after today in sioux falls monday and tuesday but then we watch the second half of the week carefully for that chance at snow not to mention cooler temperatures coming back into the picture keep in mind average is going to be in the upper 30s to around 40 but either way it will still be below average in aberdeen it's a daily chance for snow some have better chances than others like today and a monday and then thursday where blowing snow will be a concern in pier snow showers today then we'll watch the second half of the week very carefully as temperatures take a step backward and last but not least in rapid city a few rain and snow showers today a better chance for snow tuesday and then again on thursday as we head later into the week have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to Kelloland.com.